G'day, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV. This is episode 17 of How to Pick a Wine. Today, we're going to taste Shiraz, or as the rest of the world calls the grape, Syrah. When I was a kid, I did accents all the time. I lived um, different parts of the world and I used to parrot accents and I still like to parrot accents and still like to make fun. I know making fun of people is no longer funny, but uh, well, I was born in Australia, so I guess if you're born there, you're still allowed to make fun of the place you're from. Anyway. Thank you, Australians, for giving us a wonderful world of wine and humor, and I do love the country. Syrah. Australian Syrah is Shiraz. Any other Syrah from anywhere else is called Syrah. The French really started the Syrah world. It was a grape that evolved in France. It's from the Rhone River Valley which travels from mid part of France all the way to the south, the part called Provence, which the Romans named Provence. They named it that because it was the provincial area outside of Italy. Of course, it's not. It's in France, but, you know, you get the idea. Um, it's warm. It's a um, sun-kissed area of France. There are beaches down in the south on the Mediterranean, uh, people go on holidays in Provence. People go to holidays in the south of France and all the way up the Rhone River Valley. You have warmer temperatures. These make big grapes, big ripe grapes. And that's what Syrah does well. It likes it hot. Therefore, in Australia, it produces a very nice expression of itself. This whole series how to pick a wine has been on the noble grapes. And the noble grapes are grapes that can leave their home country, in this case for Syrah, France, and go to some other place, in this case Australia or California, and express themselves differently. So here are two different expressions of Syrah, and we're going to start with Shiraz first. Now, talking about warmth, if I look at the back of my Molly Duker, which in my buying episode, I said was created by Sparky and Sarah Marquis. That's still true, but Sarah is now the sole owner of the winery. She and Sparky split up. So there you go. This is Sarah Marquis' wine all the way. And if I look for the alcohol percentage, it says 16%. That is a lot. In fact, I was kind of unsure that wine could even make 16%. Uh, I thought that the yeast died at 15. When I looked at my coupe or coupe, if I was saying it with a French accent, uh, this is 14%, a whole 2% lower. So how did they get 16% alcohol into the bottle of Molly Duker? Well, you can do that with new strains of yeasts that are more resistant to the alcohol as they're producing it. They used to die at about 15%. Evidently, they're stretching them now out to 15 percent 16%. However, the labeling laws in America allow the percentages to be a little bit off. If your wine is 7 to 13.5, your range can be one and a half percent. So your seven could be as much as eight and a half. Your 13 and a half could be as much as 14, 15, or vice versa, plus or minus. When you get above 14 percent, the percentage amount is only about to be one percent off. So your 15 could be 16, your 16 could be 17. Wow, that would really be a lot. Your 14 could be 13. You get the idea. Why is there is this distinction? Well, red 
table wine or red wine or white wine as listed on the label has to be within seven to 13 and a half. If it's over 14, then you are not a red wine anymore. If you're over 16%, over 16%, so that 1.1% really makes a difference, you're considered a dessert wine or a fortified wine and you're taxed differently. So there's quite an inducement to make sure that you get the label correctly submitted to the government and you could be off by really one and a half to one percent. That's quite a lot. And that makes a big difference when paying duties or taxes. Okay, there it is. Now, alcohol is perceived in two different ways in the body and you're tasting it. It can be perceived as heat. Some people say that's a spiciness in wine. Obviously, like if you're drinking a spirit like a whiskey and you feel the burn, that's the alcohol. And then it can also be perceived, especially in wine, as sweetness. So the higher alcohol wines are going to be sweeter. The problem is to get that sweet characteristic, you have to balance it out. If you have the burn, that really takes away from the sweet yumminess of the wine. Syrahs or Shirazes are often big bodied, full flavored. They can be grippy in their tannins. Uh, they have aromas of blackberries, leather, tobacco, even tar. I've heard of people saying it tastes like bacon. Well, let's find out. Australian Shiraz often tastes or has the aromas of eucalyptus. I know, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's crack into the Molly Duker and see what it tastes like. Okay, if you look at the back label of the Molly Duker, it's got some advice on here. The key piece of advice is to enjoy this wine at 60 degrees. All right, I tested this with my temperature probe and it shows 64. Now you might think four degrees doesn't really matter, but in this regard, for this wine, which is a big high alcohol red wine, that four degrees actually, I think it does matter. When I used to work at a restaurant, you would, at the bar, the white wines, these are wines served by glass, the white wines were kept open in the fridge. The red wines were just down in a trough. Next to that trough behind the bar, there's the sink and then there's this trough. You know, that's kind of where all the well drinks are. They call it a well for a reason. It's well down there. Anyway, the exhausts would come up and it would warm the wines. Those wines were probably 75 degrees or more. Plus it's warm in a restaurant. It could be summertime, etc. These by the glass wines, both reds and whites were either too cold for the whites and too warm for the reds. They were simply poured by the bartender, given to the server and served. The customer gets a glass of red wine, let's call it a Malbec, it's tannic and it burns. They think that's what it's supposed to taste like. No ma'am, it's not supposed to. It's not supposed to taste like that. It's not supposed to burn. What do you do if you encounter that at a restaurant? Well. Look, if you've ordered wine by the glass and it comes too warm like that, I just put an ice cube in it. It really will make a difference. I know people out there are rolling their eyes. Oh my gosh, this guy just told us to put ice in, the, in our wine. Well, yeah, because the temperature does actually matter. Do you want to enjoy it or not? The ice cube will chill down the wine and it'll be better. Wine by the glass isn't really a good deal anyway. All right, uh, the Molly Duker wines also say to do the Molly Duker shake. Well, what's the deal with the shake? For Molly Duker wines, they use nitrogen. Let's have a little science lesson. Wine's key element that is making it, changing it, is oxygen. Oxygen is continuously degrading wine. It's essentially fruit preserved in a bottle that's on its way from green banana to black banana. I mean, you know, 
where do you want to eat your banana in there? Do you want a green one or do you want a completely ripe one? A cork like this is going to allow a little bit of oxygen to come in through the wine or through the cork and it's going to age the wine. So that's how wines age in the bottle. The cork actually is providing that. But here, which I bet this is cold enough now, our Molly Duker doesn't have a cork. It has a screw cap. Haha. Uh -huh. So no oxygen coming in. Well, they don't care. They don't want that. They want you to do the Molly Duker shake. The Molly Duker shake is to help get rid of nitrogen that's been used in the winemaking process. They use nitrogen to help filter out the oxygen that's in the wine during the, the process of making the wine. The screw cap serves two purposes for them. It makes the wine so you can open it and close it so you can do the shake and it doesn't allow any oxygen to come in. Now, confusingly, they say don't do the shake if it's past a certain date. Well, the certain date here for this 2019 is 2021, this 2022. I'm going to do the shake anyway because I'm interested to see whether or not it does anything. And this lends credence to the whole ideas of venturis, aeration, decantating, all the, all the stuff that people do to wine to kind of abuse it and op they say open it up. Normally when I'm tasting wines like this, I'm scoring them. I'm not trying to open them up. I'm just trying to open them, pour them, taste them, and give them a blanket score so that every one that I taste is tasted in a similar fashion. I don't want to do anything outside of normal. I don't want to decant. I don't want to aerate. But here, because they make such a big deal out of it, I'm going to. So we're going to do the two different ways. The first one is I'm just going to pour some of the wine into this glass here. That's probably more than they want me to do. And then they say to shake it and then open it and then close it and then shake it and then open it and then pour it. Okay. Now I'm going to taste these side by side and see if there's actually a difference. Of course, the Molly Duker people, if Sarah was here, she'd say, look, you've already gone through the time when you don't need to do this, so now you've just totally changed the character of the wine. Well, whatever. Okay, so Syrah. It should be dark in color and nice and purplish, so we do have a purple ruby, and deep in color. Okay, I'm going to smell. This one is the straight out of the bottle. Oh, my gosh, I like Shiraz. Or Shiraz. That smells clean. It smells like fresh fruit, like blackberries. There is a little hint of Asphalt, I know that sounds weird. I can smell the alcohol. It's a little bit spicy. Okay, let's try the, let's smell the one that I, I shook up. It doesn't smell much different. I would call it less aromatic, actually, than the one I didn't shake. So, um, pleasant aromas, yes, I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to say tar, but uh, alcohol a little bit, I'll call that spice, and I'll give it a 7. I've filled out the top of my tasting card here. Okay, let's taste this. This is the one that I did not shake. Mmm. Yeah, it's dry, it's full-bodied, acidity is the first thing you get. Mm. 
it's fresh. It's got really nice acidity. I'll give it, I better write two scores here, an eight. Now I'm going to taste the one that I shook up. It's similar. It's eight. Now balance. <clears throat> Both of these, 16% alcohol. Did it burn? Nope, it didn't. And I think I've got the temperature right because it feels uh, refreshing in the mouth. It doesn't feel heavy and weighty. It feels light, refreshing, a little bit crisp. I like that. I like a little, a little cool temperature on my wine. So the balance is good. I can taste the tannins a little bit. They're a little bit grippy. The alcohol doesn't burn. The tannins are nice. They're smooth. The wine has good balance. I'm going to give it a 9 for balance. Complexity. Okay, let's see if I get multiple aromas after swallowing it. With complexity, when I'm trying to assess that, I often take air with wine in my mouth, I take air in my nose and breathe out the back of my nose to kind of push oxygen up in, and that grabs the, the aromas in my mouth and moves it up to the back of my palate and up into my olfactory epithelium. I think I said that right. And that's my sense of smell. I get a little bit of an herbal earthiness. Do I get eucalyptus? Not necessarily, but there's definitely an herbalness, a spiciness to the wine. It's, it's very nice. It, it does make me want to have another sip. I'm going to give it a nine for complexity. And finish in length. It has a nice finish. It's long. I can continue to taste the wine in my mouth. It is definitely a little bit, that minerality, that idea that you've got kind of a, kind of a I don't know, I don't want to say dirt, but it's like a dirt flavor in my mouth. But that's that kind of that tar, that meatiness. I like it. It's nice and long finish. So a long finish, and I'm going to give it a nine also. Okay, not much of a difference between shaking and non-shaking, so I didn't really need to taste it again for complexity. Let's move on to Coop and see how a single varietal Syrah from California compares. Okay, Coop. 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 Whatever. This is from California. Now, there's a movement in California in winemakers, and they like to call themselves the Roan Rangers. <laughs> what the heck are they talking about? They're talking about making Southern Roan or Roan style wines in California. They are enthusiastic about Syrahs, Grenaches, Mouvedres. This winery is enthusiastic about making single variety Syrahs. And I, it's as interesting because their bottle shape compared to the Molly Duker, Molly Duker's like, well, we're going to use a high shouldered Bordeaux style bottle because we're Australians and we call it Shiraz. Fine. Fine by me. New world. You can do whatever you want. Here, California. Slope shoulders, like a Burgundian bottle. But here I have an example of a wine from France that is actually from the Rhone River Valley. This is a Gigondas. And look at the difference. This is noticeably taller. Not by a lot, but it's noticeably taller. And it's thicker. It's huge. This fits in my wine rack. This doesn't. It's too fat. 
So I thought, how much bigger is the bottle? So I weighed them. This bottle weighs an entire pound more. That's just how much bigger the glass is. The wine weighs the same amount. This is a pound more of glass. That's just crazy. And these big slope shoulder wines are super common, or bottles are super common to find in California examples, both Pinot Noir and in their Rhone clones. The Rhone Rangers like these big fat bottles. All right, 57 degrees, that's fine. Let's uh, open this up and taste it. I think that bottle shape, I think it's an interesting thing to note. One, I like wines because aesthetically they're they're fun. I like the labels, I like the process of opening them, I like the caps, and I like bottle shapes. I think the whole process is interesting. It's a little ritual that we get to participate in. So knowing how the bottle shapes are and how they're, how they're different, I think it's, it's neat. Okay, so this is a $30 wine. The Molly Duker was 25 bucks. I expect from these sorts of wines at the 25, 30, 35, 40 dollar level, I expect them to be good examples of themselves, of the grape. So let's see how Coop has done. This is 14%, two percentage points less than the Molly Duker. Okay. Uh, purplish red color and deep aromatics let's see what we get there's a touch of herbs in there maybe a little bit of rosemary There's definitely black fruit, blackberries, maybe cranberries, which is interesting. Oh, it, it smells good. It's starting to become more expressive. It smells nice. So I'm going to write blackberry, rosemary, and I'm going to give it a seven. It's not overly expressive. To get a 9 or a 10, I want that aroma to just pow me in the face, and I haven't had that yet. Okay, let's taste it. It's dry. It's medium full-bodied. The acidity is crisp. I think it's nicely, that's nicely done. I'll give it a seven. The balance is good. There's no burn, nothing going wrong with the wine. The tannins are smooth and supple. It's got a good balance. I'll give it a nine. Now complexity. Yeah, it's definitely an herbal aroma. It's a little bit lean. It's not as fruit forward as the Molly Duker. That makes the wine appear a little bit watery in the mouth. So the complexity there is going to suffer. I'm going to give it a five. The finish, <clears throat> it's nice. It's longish. The tannins are very nice and round. It's supple. It has a good finish. It adds to the sensation. I'll give it an eight. Okay. I'm going to go do my math.
Okay, here are my final scores for our Syrah Shiraz wines. The Molly Duker scored 42 points for a total of 92. And the Coupe scored 36 for a total of 86. Wine enthusiasts scored the Coupe 93. Uh, the Molly Duker at $26. That's the clear winner here for me. It's a new style Australian Shiraz. It's jammy. It's fruit forward. It would be a nice cocktail wine. And it's also food friendly. The coupe, if you had this by itself, somebody opened it up for you or you brought it home and you had it, you wouldn't think, ugh, you would think, eh. It's a nice wine, but at $30, I wish it was a little more everything. Just needs to be bigger, bolder, brighter, and it's a little bit subdued at 30 bucks. You know, you don't know. When you're shopping for wine, you do your best guessing. Now that I've had the Molly Duker at 26, I would recommend that. If you see this at the store for 26 bucks, that's a good deal. They used to go for a lot more. They've come down in, down in price. Now, Syrahs pair well with stews, hearty dishes, a, a pancetta, uh, cassoulet, which is, oh man, if you've never had cassoulet, you, you really should endeavor to make that. It's essentially bean casserole with meat. Oh my gosh, it's good. And a big, bold, fruit forward Syrah like this would go great. The Australians would say a Syrah goes perfect with barbecue, and I wouldn't disagree. This is a nice wine for summertime, for get-togethers, for friends. Okay, that's all I've got for you this week. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about Syrah, Shiraz. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is it new to you? I'm going to go get Sarah. We'll see what she thinks. And next week, we'll be shopping for Pinot Noir. That'll be episode 18, I think. I hope. I'm getting lost in my numbers. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you join me for more wine experiences to come. Until next week, I say a tout there and cheers. Hello. Okay, Syrah, or Shiraz, or whatever. Molly Duker, Coupe, Coupe. That smells quite nice. That smells <laughs> um, a little bit more barnyardy. The Molly Duker is very, very fruity. The um, Coupe or Coupe or whatever is. Um, also fruity, but minerally and a little bit barnyardy. Okay, I'll try the Molly Duker. Wow, that's a big wine. <clears throat> a little bit burny, uh, very fruity, a little bit oaky. Makes my mouth water, so it must be kind of high acid also, which I like. Okay, trying the second one. Also a bit burny, <clears throat> a little bit more thin. I bet it'd be good with food. Um, I feel like this is more food friendly and the Molly Duker is more uh, cocktail wine. Either way, they're both pretty tasty. Cheers.